Hilu O2, the latest AI video model by Minimax, is all over the internet, showing off its prowess with physics and prompt adherence. I've been playing around with this model and I've got lots of videos to show you. Some are really good and some are, well, stick around because whatever they are, you don't want to miss it. Now, I've been using Hilu O2 on OpenArt and there's a few reasons for that. Why pay for another subscription when OpenArt has all the latest and greatest AI image and video generation models on one platform under a single subscription? Two, OpenArt has all my favorite AI image generation models like Flux and ImageN4 and lots of tools to work with those images. So when I'm doing image to video, I don't have to switch platforms. I can take the image that I created on OpenArt and turn it into a video using Hilu O2 or whatever video model right there on OpenArt. You can probably tell that I really like OpenArt and not just because they're sponsoring this video, although that doesn't hurt. Now let's check out some of the videos I've generated with Hilu O2 and then I'll show you how to use it here on OpenArt. Open art. With Hilu O2, you can do image to video or text to video. So starting with image to video, my favorite part about this astronaut video is the way that it does this focus change at the very end, blurring everything. It's really cool. Now, I think I messed up in my prompt here a little bit by saying that the astronaut drifts sideways. That probably would have made more sense if in my starting image, the astronaut was sideways. For this one, I just gave it the image, no prompt at all. And I really like how it did this little speed ramp effect where it's going really slow and then it speeds up there at the end. Here we have a martial arts competition. I'm really impressed with how it kept things together in their body movements. I could find some details to complain about, like maybe some of the faces in the background. But overall, this is really impressive, especially compared to where AI video was just a few months ago. I kind of thought it would know what to do with this image of a bike courier, so I didn't give it a prompt. And the guy on the bike defies gravity for a few seconds there, and then just takes a slow little stroll in a circle. Not what I was looking for. So I tried that again, this time with a prompt, telling it what I wanted. And we started off okay, but then everything just falls apart. I kept the image the same, tweaked the prompt a little bit, and now our bike courier is doing what I wanted him to do. Starting with this image, what I was looking for is an earthquake that had everybody kind of confused and looking around. Indeed, everyone is confused and looking around, but I'm not so sure this is an earthquake. I don't really know why that makes papers all of a sudden take flight. And there's some other weirdness, but it's still a really cool clip. Now, I also used a really long prompt with this one. Of course, I didn't write that. AI helped me with that. Maybe I should have dialed that back a bit and been more concise. Here outside the motel, this shady car decides it's time to roll out when the popo shows up. Now we could say it didn't follow my prompt because I wanted the police lights to come up behind the car. And I was thinking the rear of the car. But technically, those lights do show up behind the car if you're looking at the depth of the image. So this is text to video. This prompt here is the only thing I gave it. I didn't give it a starting image and it came up with a great video. Now it didn't have the motorcycle bursting forward toward the camera, but I might have confused that a little bit by having that burst toward the camera early in the prompt and then later in the prompt having the push in wide shot. I didn't fiddle with it and try and fix it because I really liked the clip that it created. Here the monk is supposed to be walking toward the door on a misty mountain at sunrise. It got a lot of things right here including the pan right medium shot and I can't say that he's not walking toward the door because maybe the door's behind the camera. I've become kind of obsessed with these juggling videos. It's amazing to me that the AI from a text prompt can produce a person juggling something. And it's not just people juggling. Here we got a robot juggling orbs. I put quite a bit of detail in this prompt and it seems to have captured everything and got the physics right. Here's my take on the skateboarding video. I've seen this go badly with many AI video models. This one does a pretty good job, except maybe with the sparks, especially the ones that seem to appear when the skateboard is a foot or two away. I asked for a dog on the motorcycle and a cat in the sidecar, and it's definitely not a cat in the sidecar, and our dog on the motorcycle looks more like a man wearing a dog costume. But the video cracked me up. I think it's the way they both look left and then they look right. It might be a dud, but it's still a keeper. This sprinter starts off looking really good. I'm not sure about how he's going over that hurdle, but honestly, I have no idea. If I ever tried to do that, I would face plant on the track. How about a rocket launch? My only minor complaint with this one is I'd like the shot to have been zoomed out a little bit more so we could see the whole rocket, but it did follow the prompt and by being zoomed in there on the ground in the bottom of the rocket, it made for a cool scene. Now this wrecking ball swings in okay, but it actually disconnects from the cable on the crane. And if you pay close attention, it kind of looks like the building blows out before the ball even hits it. After the impact, unfortunately the ball has disappeared, but all the stuff and the dust falling, that looks pretty legit. 
I worked on that prompt and tried again, but that really didn't work. It ends up with way too much slack in the cable when the wrecking ball is supposed to be swinging by it, and it ends up doing very little damage to the building. One more attempt at this scene, and I don't know, I guess the wrecking ball is attached by a magnet to the chain or whatever. It shouldn't be sliding on its little anchor point there. I wanted to do a surf scene, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. Everybody does the young guy surfing. Let's try a 60 year old out there on the surfboard. Represent us older folks. He's cruising along, doing a much better job than I would, that is for sure. There's a little bit of choppiness there, and I don't know the first thing about surfing, but it looks plausible to me at least. This crash test scene gave me a surprise at the end. After the crash, my crash test dummy is alive and looking around, wondering what happened. Well, I don't know, man. You were supposed to be a dummy. I tried to have some dominoes falling down, and instead the dominoes are just creating more dominoes from themselves. I switched up the prompt a little bit, and now, I don't know, they're not multiplying, but they're not acting like dominoes are supposed to behave. This musician playing the violin, it seemed to follow everything I asked for in the prompt. One thing I noticed, though, is that it looks like there's only one string on that violin, and it's been a while, but I thought they had, I don't know, four, five, six, more strings than one. I really didn't expect it to get this candle being lit anywhere near right. This is super impressive. From the way it lights there in the beginning, the way the flame moves, the smoke, the growth of the flame, this is really cool. This scene starts off with a guy dribbling the basketball. That's all looking good. His movements are all great. He moves toward the hoop, jumps and shoots. That's fine. And then whatever that was. It was so close until right there at the end when the ball didn't quite act like a basketball. I don't know, maybe I'm being too picky. Just something looks off there to me. Here we got Granny at 101 years old blowing out her birthday candles. For obvious reasons, it didn't put 101 candles on that cake. I like the way the smoke rises up from the candles and then her expression at the very end. Very nice. Here we're going for a slow-mo close-up of a bullet going through a wine glass. It's kind of a strange looking bullet and the reflection of impact seems to hit the glass before the bullet does and then the bullet does something a little weird there at the end, but it's still super cool. I tweaked the prompt and tried that one again. On impact, the glass seems to warp outward. I don't think that's exactly how physics work, but I've found myself watching this over and over again because it's so cool. Fair warning, I wouldn't take a drink for the next few seconds. I don't want you to do a spit take on your phone or your computer when you see these next three videos. They didn't turn out at all like they're supposed to, but they're great. What's supposed to happen is somebody steps on this banana peel, slips and falls in an exaggerated manner, gets up and keeps on moving. What actually happens, I don't even know how to explain, that is definitely flailing in an exaggerated manner. And indeed, the character at the end does get up and walk away. But he didn't even slip on the banana peel. He walks up and starts rubbing it with his foot and then falls over sideways. So I figured we'd simplify the prompt a little bit and try this scene again. This guy goes out of his way to make contact with this mutant banana peel. And then I'm not sure what happens to him, but he needs to dance. He is feeling the groove and then he just starts to walk away. We're gonna try this one more time. This looks a little bit more like a banana peel laying there. But this guy is gonna run to the banana peel. He's gonna start flipping out before he gets to it. And then I, I don't I don't even know what he's doing. And then I guess he's gotta check his pants. These are definitely what I call fun fails. It didn't do what I asked it to do, but it gave me something fun, that's for sure. So it's not perfection every time. But overall, this model is very impressive. To generate a video using Hilu O2 on OpenArt, come over on the left menu and click videos. That brings you to the create video page. If we wanna do image to video, just make sure you have this image tab selected. Next to where it says select model, click this drop down. OpenArt has lots of models to choose from, including Kling 2.1, VO3, and a whole lot of others. Today, we're gonna to work with Minimax Hilu O2. Next, we need to give it an image, and we can do that by dragging it into this area, or if you click in here, you can click to upload from your computer, click history to select an image you have on OpenArt, or characters if you've created characters on OpenArt and wanna use one of those. We're gonna click history, this model opens up on the Generation tab, which will be the images that you haven't put into any albums. If you're looking for something that you've moved into an album, you'll find those under the Albums tab. We're going to go back to Generations. I'm going to select this image of the bird flying and click Confirm. Now our starting image is loaded in there. Below that is the prompt box. A prompt is optional and leaving that blank can turn out great or be a total disaster. If you do use a prompt with Hilu O2, you might have noticed from the prompts in the video that I 
I showed you, you can tell it both what you want to happen in the scene and what you want the camera to be doing. And you do that all using natural language. For this, I'm gonna say the camera tracks the bird as it soars through the air. That tells it what we want the camera to do. We want it to track the bird and what we want to happen in the scene, the bird soaring through the air. Open Art has some extra options here for auto sound and auto speech. If you turn on auto sound, you can either let the AI figure out what sounds to generate, or you can specify something like the sound of footsteps or whatever. Auto speech lets you do text to speech, but at the moment it's limited to 80 characters and a relatively small selection of AI voices. So we're gonna leave both of these audio options off and move down under the settings where we have the duration and resolution. Now, if you choose the six second duration, you can select either 768p or 1080p for the resolution. But if you choose the 10 second duration, the only option for resolution is gonna be the 768p. 1080p is not available for 10 second videos. We'll switch that back to six seconds. And now everything's set, we can click the create button and it gets to work on our video, which will show up right here when it's finished. Now there's another way you can get to video generation right from your image. Let's say we're on the create page. When we preview an image, we've got this button over here on the right that says use image. Click that and then click image to video. That'll bring you right into the create video page. It'll put you on the image tab and it'll load that image in as your source. Then you can select whatever model you wanna use, add the prompt if you want and adjust any of the other settings. Now, if we wanna do text to video from the create video page, we just switch over to the text tab. To get there from the home page, just click videos in the left menu. On the create videos page, click the text tab if it's not already selected. Then next to select model, click the drop down. Again, lots of models to choose from. And today we're working with Minimax Hilu O2. Now we need to give it a prompt. I'm gonna say a low angle shot slowly zooms in on a golden retriever splashing through shallow water at the edge of a lake on a summer day. Sounds wonderful. Now you do have some auto enhance options here in the prompt box on OpenArt. If you toggle this on, it's gonna enhance your prompt after you click the create button. So you won't know how it enhanced your prompt until after the video is generated. We'll leave that toggle off. If you click this drop down, you can click this quick enhance button and it'll enhance your prompt right here in the prompt box before you generate. And that gives you a chance to look at the prompt, see what kind of changes it made and change anything that you don't necessarily like. Now, I'm not sure that this is really optimized for Hilu O2 video generation. So I'm gonna get rid of that enhance prompt and just go back to my original prompt. The audio add-on options are the same as when we looked at image to video. We're gonna skip over those and for duration, I'll leave it on six seconds and 768p and click create. Here's our tracking shot of the soaring bird. This was the image to video that we created. Looking pretty good, a bird soaring, the shot's tracking. And here's our text to video, the golden retriever splashing at the edge of the lake. I'd say he's splashing. Definitely looks like a golden retriever and he looks like a happy, cool pup. I'm really having fun with text-to-video with this Hilu O2 model. Both the text-to-video and image-to-video are generating some pretty impressive results. Sure, it's not perfect, but some of the stuff it's generating is really solid. Hey, my name is Bob. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, and I hope you'll come back and join me for another video.